Hello everyone, welcome to our podcast. Uh, my name is Mahesh Varia and I'm joined today by Kulsoom Hardy, a Knowledge Council in our Incentives and Remuneration team. Today we're going to discuss two recent tribunal decisions involving HMRC and each of the celebrities Gary Lineker and Eamon Holmes. Both of the decisions related to the off-payroll rules, also historically known as the IR35 rules. Before we get on to the discussion, I thought it would be helpful to briefly recap what the off-payroll rules are designed to do. First of all, it's worth noting that they are a set of anti-avoidance rules. The purpose of the rules is to make sure that those working like employees, but engaging through a personal service company or a partnership, in other words, an intermediary of some kind, are taxed like employees. The way the rules work is they pretend that there is a contract between the individual, the worker, and the client to whom the services are being provided. And this pretend or hypothetical contract is then analysed to determine whether the individual would be deemed to be an employee of the client if the individual had been engaged by the client directly. If the answer is yes, then the worker is taxed as an employee, which means that PAYE income tax and employee and employer national insurance contributions become due in relation to payments relating to the engagement. If the answer is no, i.e. the hypothetical contract determines that the worker is effectively treated as a self-employed person, then employment taxes and national insurance contributions wouldn't be due. Now, it's worth noting that I've spoken about the, the rules being called the off-payroll rules, and historically the rules being called the IR35 rules. Now, the way the rules currently are applied are slightly different to the way the original IR35 rules applied. Originally, if you were caught by the IR35 rules, then the obligation to account for PAYE income tax and employee-employer national insurance contributions rested on the intermediary, quite often the personal service company of the individual. But subsequent to various changes made in recent years, the if the off-payroll rules as have now been relabeled apply, then the obligation to account for the PAYE income tax and national insurance contributions ultimately rests with the client or the person that makes the payment to the intermediary. So having been through the off-payroll rules, um, I wanted to ask Kulsoom the question as to why these rules are relevant to Gary Lineker. Thanks, Mahesh. Yes, the Gary Lineker case is actually quite unusual because the way in which he provided his services to the BBC and BT Sport wasn't through the traditional intermediary on which the IR35 rules bite, but actually through a partnership. And so for that reason, although obviously Gary Lineker is a well-known individual, his case is possibly slightly less uh, of general application than the Eamon Holmes case that we'll look at later. But Gary Lineker provided his services to the BBC and BT Sport through a partnership with his, his then wife. And the way in which he and his wife entered into the contracts with those broadcasters was by signing contracts as partners of the partnership. And it's clear from the legislation that the intermediary rules can apply where services are provided through partnerships, although this is less common than PSCs. Normally, when the IR35 rules apply, we're looking at personal service companies because people usually want to provide their services through something that provides limited um, liability and usually the tax treatment can be better. But in this particular case, there was a partnership. And uh, the revenue said, um, because the partnership uh, was an intermediary, IR35 applied, and therefore um, Gary Lineker was taxable on the income from his BBC and BT contracts, as if he was a direct employee of the, of the BBC and BT Sport. However, the first tier tribunal took the view that IR35 just wasn't applicable for the reason that you mentioned, Mahesh, and that was to do with the particular way in which 
partnerships enter into documents. And although the first tier tribunal accepted that partnerships are within IR35, the rules don't apply if there is actually a direct contract between the worker and the end client, BBC and BT Sport. And in this case, because Gary Lineker had signed the documents, albeit in his capacity as a partner, there was a direct contract and therefore IR35 couldn't apply. And it, it's interesting as well, actually, because in this particular case where had they found that IR35 did apply, it wouldn't have made much difference to the tax position because Gary Lineker would have been taxed as a partner anyway. But the national insurance position would have been different. So we're really talking about a loss of national insurance to HMRC. And how much national insurance was at stake or soon? I think it was about £700,000. Yeah, so pr- pretty significant, even, yeah. even just with employer national insurance contributions in play. And Kulsoom, if just Gary Lineker's wife had signed the contracts on behalf of the partnership, would IR35 have applied? At this stage, we don't know whether IR35 would have applied because the tribunal didn't get to that stage of the anal- analysis. The final stage, if IR35 is in point, is to look at the hypothetical contract between the worker, Gary Lineker in this case, and the end client, so BBC BT Sport, and to, to, to decide whether or not that hypothetical contract would have been one of employment or self-employment. So they never got to that stage because it was decided that IR35 didn't apply. But it's interesting to note that there was a period of time when Gary Lineker provided his services as a sole trader rather than in partnership. And there was never a suggestion then that he would be a direct employee of the end client. OK, I think it's perhaps fair to say that Gary Lineker's case is limited to its own sort of unique facts and I guess we'll have to wait and see whether HMRC appeal it but as I mentioned at the start of the podcast this isn't the only recent IR35 case involving a celebrity. Now that's right last week another IR35 case was in the spotlight and that was at the upper tier tribunal level which held that IR35 applied to contracts between the personal service company that engaged the well-known TV presenter Eamon Holmes, his personal service company is called Red, White and Green Limited, and ITV when he presented the This Morning programme. And this is one of a line of cases involving TV presenters and broadcasters. And the debate is often around whether the individual concerned has is in business on their own account and whether they have an employment-like relationship, even though they do a lot of other engagements as well. And that's a really difficult question, especially when you're dealing with people like celebrity presenters. Yes, and and it seems that this case contrasts with that of other celebrities like Lorraine Kelly, Kay Adams and Adrian Charles, who all won their cases, although I guess it's worth noting that Kay Adams' um, case is an ongoing with HMRC. I think this case also shows how difficult these decisions are and how much they depend on the fact. A lot of emphasis is really goes into how much you weigh up the different features of the aspects of the pretend or hypothetical contract between the worker, Eamon Holmes in this case, and the end client. Simply saying that you're in business on your own account because you also work for others is typically not enough to prove a justification of self-employment, especially where you do most of the work for a particular client, as Eamon Holmes seems to have done for the This Morning Show. What does this mean for those that aren't celebrities and for end clients under the off-payroll rules? Unfortunately, this shows just how difficult these decisions are to make and how essential it is for end clients to take reasonable care when they're making their status determination uh, statements. And it's not just the area of personalities where this is an issue. It's worth noting as well that we're coming up to the year anniversary of when HMRC ended their light touch approach to off payroll and the new rules and when they applied to clients in the private sector. So it's really essential that clients re-evaluate their processes in terms of off payroll, in terms of deciding whether it applies, whether they're using the right criteria for working out status, 
using CEST is one of the ways of doing this, but it can be a blunt instrument. And also, as we can see, case law is moving. So it's really important that your, your tests are moving with the case law because failure to take reasonable care could mean that the revenue um, will seek to impose penalties and those can be quite severe. They can be at least 30%, they can be up to 30% of the tax and NICS just for, for not taking reasonable care. So it's a uh, you know, difficult area for clients and uh, something that they need to keep on top of. I think you're right. I think this you know, will be an interesting area of law um, as it sort of develops and whether any cases come about under the off-payroll rules and also outside of the world of TV personalities. For more information on the off-payroll worker rules and how they might apply to your business, please do feel uh, free to check out our website www.traversmith.com where there is a Q&A article on this subject. Thanks very much for listening.